by 2010, all pupils in primary schools will be learning languages. But today, 70% of primary pupils already do. Within a language, um, they may have done one year of 20 minutes a week, or they may have done four years of an hour a week or more. And so their experience of their foreign language learning is vastly different one from another. We're now getting a huge number of students who are coming to us who already have learned a great deal of French or perhaps Spanish or perhaps Urdu. So it's quite a complex picture that comes in and we then have to sort of deal with the repercussions of that as we sort of move through Key Stage 3. This position, say MFL's staff, presents both dangers and opportunities. We might even be putting them off because there's quite a big issue here, which is that you can cover the same old ground over and over again if you're not careful. So in primary school, they'll learn how to introduce themselves and ask how someone is and talk about the contents of their pencil case, which is very thrilling. And then, if you're not careful, they'll come into Key Stage 3 and do exactly the same again. And we noticed uh, that that was becoming really a very boring thing for them. And far from harnessing the enthusiasm they had, it was making them really switched off languages. But it is possible that a switch off can become a turned on. We can improve the interest level of the topics that we teach at secondary school and we can improve the language learning skills so that pupils feel empowered to learn more languages and perhaps English speaking people will actually start wanting to learn other languages and thinking they can. So how are MFL's staff at Bellevue Girls' School in Bradford heightening the opportunities and avoiding the dangers? We sat down together uh, as a department and thought about it and came up with, I suppose, an action plan that we've gradually put into action. We've needed really to get a handle on uh, the, the, their ability very, very early on. And that's, that's constantly changing in a way because as 2010 approaches, uh, there are a large, larger and larger number of primary schools that are taking on board the primary languages strategy. And as a result, our job on entry into year seven can be quite complicated and quite challenging, really. What we're trying to do is to set the year seven as soon as they come into the school and we do that by testing them in four languages French, Spanish, Arabic and Urdu. Right girls so I'm going to give you one of the four exams that you'll be sitting. This is a writing exam so remember to write the best French that you possibly can and remember it is an exam so you need to think of it as a proper exam they are then setted as a result of those test results and we find that children, unsurprisingly, children who've learnt French in the primary school tend to go in the top sets for French and uh, those who've learnt Spanish tend to be in the top sets for Spanish and um, the same with previous experience of Arabic and Urdu. Setting based on existing knowledge and experience of the language clearly seems to make sense. But as one problem is solved, another emerges. I think really, yeah, I mean, there are, there, are, there are still some issues. I mean, clearly we would have liked all of the students to have, have moved over to the three, uh, three lessons of language a week in, in one language. Uh, the, the problem was that the, the staffing pattern simply didn't fit that. We obviously have prior knowledge now for the coming year and I think we will stay with this for the next couple of years to actually try and maintain the pattern. And obviously we'll start next year with the, with the idea that we want a teacher to be available to teach three lessons to that, that particular year group. But this year it simply didn't work, so as a result what we've got are some sets, uh, in addition to the, the ones who are doing uh, French or Spanish in a linear way, we have some sets who are doing two lessons of uh, Urdu and one of French and two lessons of uh, French and one of Arabic 
clearly had we had the opportunity to think this through fully at the beginning of the year we might well have opted for this system that we've come up with now where we're actually teaching three lessons of, of one language to you know to the groups you know, for the for the three years that they'll be in key stage three with timetabling tackled there are other challenges to face with the setting system I think setting perhaps <laughs> is a, a bit of a misnomer um, in, in that um, I think in any school, when you, when you use the term set, quite often it's a, a very sort of loose term. You know, we still within one set may well have a span of ability. Certainly I've observed lessons recently where there may well have been students who were operating at around level two up to level four or above. So even within a set, you, you get this, uh, this span of ability. And obviously, it's a challenge for, uh, for the members of staff who are teaching the, uh, the, the students to actually differentiate the, the materials appropriately. We have such a range of, of students coming in for, with, with different experiences. Um, you know, certainly catering for their needs is, has got to be top of the list. Um, I just thought it might be interesting to, to talk to Fatma and, and, and Sean a little bit, you know, sort of look at the differentiation that they're going to incorporate into their lessons. In Arabic, I <coughs> intend to use them more able to support um, some other students. For example, I put them in a mixed ability, one in each group, but how support them. From time to time, I support by task. Sometimes I support them myself. Sometimes, which I find a bit challenging, I use uh, pressure on the, for example, gifted student in mm. talent, and I put a lot of pressure on them. I say, you finish this task and you are going to do the second one. So that's, I put more pressure on them to complete, like, for example, three worksheets in one lesson or to do um, extended work. Clearly, you know, with the, the advent of the uh, Key Stage 2 uh, languages uh, advances, then we, we've got the additional challenge of, of coping with students who perhaps um, have already done a lot of the things that we would traditionally have taught here at, uh, at Key Stage 3. So you know, it, it's a question of making lessons a little bit more interesting, using the, the language more creatively and also perhaps focusing more on the, the skills that, that students need rather than simply the topic areas that they would normally have covered. I have to say that for the first time teaching Year 7, that group, I'm assuming because they've already started to learn a language, are fitting into what we want to do about learning skills rather than yeah. content and beautifully. Mm -hmm. Because they use, they're using their knowledge of Arabic to, mm. to understand how to do French. And they understand things like masculine and feminine. and talking about differentiating, actually I'm having to change the way I teach Year 7 because they have come with knowledge and skills already and, and they're mm. using them. So it is interesting to think that if we want to focus on skills, that it should work, that they'll be able to transfer them to another language later on. The methods devised at Bellevue are settling down now and staff are seeing the real benefits of integrating their approach with increased language learning in primary. There are other factors as well that I suppose um, uh, impact on, on the way that we're working. Because students uh, are picking up languages earlier on, um, obviously they're going to be more capable of doing GCSE at an earlier date. Therefore, this year, with the Year 7 that we've currently got, uh, we're looking towards the majority of them sitting their GCSE at the end of what will be their year nine. Clearly for some students that may not be appropriate, but we're looking to get as many students as we can up to GCSE by that point so that uh, the constraints for them at, at key, stage, key Stage 4 are not as great. They may then open up their options because traditionally what we've had to do is offer a, a very set number of students the dual language option whereas now we're hoping that by doing languages from year seven and 
doing the GCSE at the end of year nine, we may well create some linear dual linguists rather than having students doing uh, languages in tandem or parallel, if you like. They're going to do it in a more linear format. So we'll have perhaps some students who will do three years of French, three lessons a week, and then after that, if they're successful at GCSE, and there's certainly a great deal of interest in doing Urdu uh, and Arabic and Spanish, uh, that we may well pick up our quota, if you like, of dual linguists um, in, in Key Stage 4. They, they'll have the opportunity to do the three lessons a week in Key Stage 4 and ultimately achieve a GCSE that way. The good thing about going into primary school uh, is that um, we, we get we get to kind of make sure that the girls we get coming here and, and the boys who will go to the boys' school, we get to make sure that, that they've already covered lots of the topic areas and they've covered lots of the, uh, lots of the vocabulary and, and, you know, some of the grammar as well, which means that by the time they get here, hopefully we can start working on what we're really, really trying to, trying to push forward at the moment, which is actually working on language skills as opposed to just working on vocabulary. Now, when I went to school, it was for year seven and eight. Um, we had no French before. You know, we might have learned a few songs, uh, but, but basically that was it. So when we came in, we had to learn the vocabulary from scratch as well as, the, as, well as working the language skills. There are four students in my group who are by a good 10% generally above the others in the, in, in the class. Now, three mm -hmm. of them have done Spanish before. And another is a Slovak girl who has learnt English very recently, and she mm -hmm. has language skills. Mm -hmm. She's got the, the skills that we're looking for already. So what I'm going to do is, um, they're, they're starting a new topic tomorrow, which is going to be school subjects, but the actual lesson uh, objective is how to recognise cognates and, and how they can be useful for language learning. Mm -hmm. So instead of all of the class sitting down, and including the girls who already know the vocabulary, what we're going to have is we're going to have these four girls who will be actually up at the front presenting the vocabulary to, to the rest of the class. So while the others are sitting there trying to work out what it is, these girls will be practicing their pronunciation and one of them is actually going to be out of the room. And what we're going to do is we're going to have um, a mix of pictures and letters on the board and Mariam's hopefully going to come in and arrange them and we're going to say, OK, well, Mariam, how do you know that la historia goes with this picture? She can go, well, OK, that word looks like history. Okay. Whereas the others will be scribbling it down because they've never seen it before. Okay. So that's how I'm going to differentiate for that lesson. If our girls don't have to learn the vocabulary, if they've already known it, and that gives us a massive, massive chance to kind of really, really work on, on language skills, which will hopefully translate into good GCSE grades. And, you know, it's obvious that the girls that I teach are much better at language than I was at Year 7 because they've had experience of it before. So, you know, it's only a good thing that we can kind of go into the schools and, and get that experience. So it's good for us and it's good for the kids as well. If you had to give an answer, OK, what is a cognate, what would you say? Marion, what would you say a cognate is? A cognate is a, um, a word that sounded the same or looks the same. You are an absolute star. I think that's probably what they say in the dictionary. A cognate is a word that sounds the same and looks the same. So, what I'd like to be aware of is some cognates are really easy to spot, OK? So, like this one, Aisha, le, la geografia, no sheen, la geografia is obviously geography. That looks just like it, doesn't it? Well, I think primary languages and the spread of primary language teaching is a huge opportunity. And we need to build on it to make it the right base for secondary languages. And I do think that if we do that, we will encourage language learning to continue right through to A-level, or dare I say, the International Baccalaureate.